What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another view. This time we're taking a look at Trading Places, starring Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd, directed by John Landis. Trading Places tells the story of these two mega-rich brothers named Mortimer and Randolph Duke, who decide to make a bet. And this bet, they want to take one of their top executives, make him poor, and they want to take a poor man and to and make him rich, in sort of a nature versus nurture type of deal. That is the overall story of. Trading places. This is a demented version of pretty much the Prince and the Pauper. So, how I feel about Trading Places? I love Trading Places. This is one of my all-time favorite comedy movies. This is one of my all-time favorite Eddie Murphy movies. I love Trading Places. The story behind this, the story to this movie is utterly absurd, yet so damn entertaining. And John Landis gets so much mileage out of this movie, it is not even funny. Trading Places came out just as Eddie Murphy was starting to come out, was starting to become a big name in, in Hollywood. And this was pretty much his breakout role. To me, this was his, his real breakout role. And he's utterly fantastic as Billy Ray Valentine. I love the character of Billy Ray Valentine in this movie. This is the perfect showcase of the energy that Eddie Murphy has, that Eddie Murphy had as a comedian during his youth. And I love how you, and I love Billy Ray Valentine as two different people, yet still maintaining the same personality. Like, when we first see Billy Ray Valentine, he's just a uh, uh, a broke street hustler. And then later on in the movie, when the swap happens with Dan Aykroyd's character, he becomes very, very inclined to the upper-class lifestyle. And, it, and he almost takes to it like a, like a, like a fish to water. Well, that, however, on the flip side, the Dan Aykroyd character, who is a pompous rich man, once he becomes poor, he becomes the epitome of desperate. Worse than Billy Ray Valentine was to the point where he's like holding people up at, gun, at gunpoint and trying to commit suicide on two different occasions. So I, I absolutely love the contrast because the whole thing about this bet was that these two old brothers named Mortimer and Randolph, they wanted to make a bet nature versus nurture. Uh, the Mortimer brother, he thought that he was going he was he was with the character of Lewis played by Dan Aykroyd saying that if we make Lewis poor he's going to get right back on top while Billy Ray Valentine is going to crumble in with, with us but I like how the reverse happened that's where the comedy really works for me is that the reversal happened instead of Billy Ray Valentine falling under pressure to the in, a, in an upper class situation he acclimates himself he acclimates himself to it very very well and it's the Lewis character who completely falls apart and I thought, and like I said, I thought Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd played these roles utterly fantastic. The scenes that they have together sharing screen time, I thought their chemistry was impeccable. You know, Dan Aykroyd as a pompous rich man, he fits the role to the T and he brings that patented Dan Aykroyd humor. And it's hard to hate Dan Aykroyd. He's such a, he's, he's such a, even when Dan Aykroyd's playing an ass, yes, he still has some sort of likability to him. And Eddie Murphy... It's just hard to hate Eddie Murphy in any movie he's in because he just has a very likable on-screen charisma to him. And this movie, no exception. Uh, but this movie's also backed by a really good supporting cast. I already mentioned Ralph Bellamy and Don uh, and Don Amici, who play the two who play the two elder brothers, who I thought were fantastic in their role as, as these two bored, curmudgeon old men who are having a childish bet over or uh, about ruining two people's lives. It goes to show you just how deplorable these two guys are but it's played for laughs and it works really well but they're also backed by paul gleason who plays this guy called clarence beaks who is secretly working for the uh duke brothers as the duke brothers are in the commodity trade and they want to corner the market and this actually plays into the end into the big end of the movie where you get to wall street and it's actually billy ray valentine and and uh lewis that put one up on the dukes by getting that by getting sweet revenge on them by making them go broke by switching out these false crop reports. So I thought that the ending is fantastic and, and the performance by Ralph Bellamy and uh, Don Amici at the end of the movie is fantastically hilarious. I love it. But yeah, I thought Paul Gleason as Clarence Beaks, I thought he was really good in the movie. I like the whole scene where he pretty much, where he and the Dukes frame Lewis for stealing, even though Lewis didn't do a damn thing. And this is the catalyst that leads to the, uh, that leads to Lewis going broke and his introduction to the Ophelia character played by Jamie Lee Curtis. This was Jamie Lee Curtis's uh, first big major role post her uh, horror run. And I thought Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis was an absolute fox in this movie. She was gorgeous. 
And the chemistry between Jamie Lee Curtis and Dan Aykroyd, very underrated. They have a really, really underrated romance throughout this movie. And I like how it's natural. In that Ophelia doesn't fall, f and they don't fall for each other right away. The movie builds up to it. And I thought they did a fantastic job with that. And Jamie Lee Curtis, she was great. Uh, Denim Elliott is another actor who plays it. was in this movie. He plays the uh, the Butler Coleman. I love Denim Elliott from the Indiana, from the Indiana, from the Indiana Jones movies, and I love the dry sense of humor he gives the character of Coleman. And I also like how the Coleman character he's reluctant to be a part of this because you can see in a lot of scenes how he kind of feels bad for Billy Ray that he's being put in a position that he that he should not be in, and he also feels bad for what's happening to. Uh, to what's happening to Lewis and his life being ruined to the point where Lewis loses his friends, he loses his girlfriend, Lewis loses everything until he get until he until he and Billy Ray work together to build themselves back up again. And I actually like that, you know, because at near the end of the movie, Ray and uh, Billy Ray and Lewis they start to develop an underlying uh, partnership and a friendship in a way that I think actually pays off at the end of the movie, where Billy Ray, Lewis, Coleman, and Ophelia they kind of form their own little family unit which is which I thought was actually pretty cool and I enjoyed that immensely uh, in terms of iconic scenes this movie is chock full of kind of iconic scenes you know the scene of, of Louie dressing like a homeless Santa Claus crashing a New Year a Christmas party is hysterical uh, the Wall Street the entire scene at Wall Street is funny as all hell uh, my, one of my personal favorite scenes is the train scene where where Lewis, Ophelia, Coleman, and Billy Ray are trying to trick uh, Clarence Speaks into getting a briefcase. And I want to go on record. This movie nowadays gets a lot of controversy for the fact that Dan Aykroyd used blackface in this movie. Listen, if you watch the Godforsaken movie, it's not being done in a racist way. It's being done as a way to trick a guy into getting something. Bill, uh, uh, Louis is pretty much going under disguise. He's not doing it to, uh, to his, this movie. He's not making a statement of, oh, blackface is this, the blackface is that. He's doing blackface as a way, as, as a disguise. I mean, I mean, come on already. But it's a funny scene. It's great, you know. Lionel Joseph. Come on, man. How do you hate a scene like that? If anything, they're making fun of blackface, and you morons don't want to. You morons just can't read past it because you're so stupid. That's why I don't like the SJW culture. You fucking clowns will go after anything without without the context of what's actually happening in a scene. I stand by. I love the train scene. I don't care. Dan Aykroyd is not using blackface to uh, make a political statement. He's using blackface to trick a guy into getting up into into trying into getting a briefcase. And the whole thing of Clarence Beak being put in a gorilla costume is utterly hysterical to itself as well. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. Those are pretty much my thoughts on Trading Places. There's a lot more to talk about with this movie, but those are just my overall thoughts. I don't have too many complaints about Trading Places. If I have any complaints, I'd have liked to see more of the Paul Gleason character of Clarence Beaks. He's used very, very sparringly. He's not really used a lot. But that's pretty much it. That's my only complaint. I would have taken more Clarence Beaks. Everything else in this movie, I absolutely love it and enjoy it. So, Trading Places to me gets a solid 9 out of 10. I love this movie. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Trading Places. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Like this video and subscribe. And I will check you back next time for more.